Welcome to the Engineering Update. I'm WDD's Editor-in-Chief Janine Mooney and in this week's episode, SpaceX hosts competition for the best Hyperloop pod design, a new app lets you drive your car with a smartphone, and NASA's new Deep Space CubeSats. SpaceX is holding a competition in June 2016 for students and engineering teams to design Hyperloop pods. Hyperloop is Elon Musk's concept for a solar-powered 800 miles per hour tube transportation system that promises a trip between Los Angeles and San Francisco in under 40 minutes. Pods with seats for a few passengers would travel through the above-ground tubes with a distance of five miles or so between the other pods. Musk announced plans for the Hyperloop concept in August 2013 and was estimated to cost about $6 billion. Of course, with every new design concept comes safety concerns, and in this case, Musk says a safe distance between the pods would be about five miles, so you could have about 70 pods between LA and San Francisco that leave every 30 seconds, and an emergency brake would also be designed into the pods. He also claims the transport system will be resistant to earthquakes and immune to poor weather. SpaceX plans to make its own version of a pod as a reference for competing teams. Hyperloop would be the fifth major form of transportation and would also be the fastest mode of transportation. Teams of students or independent engineers can sign up to present a half-scale pod design as well as submit designs for subsystems and pod safety features. Applicants will present their ideas and designs at Texas A&M University in early January to a panel of Tesla Motors and SpaceX engineers and university professors, who will then give feedback on the prototypes. The teams will then get a chance to bring these creations to life during an in-person design weekend. And that's all. Jaguar Land Rover is testing a new system that allows drivers to remote control their vehicles using a smartphone app. Here's how it works. The driver gets out of the vehicle and pulls out their smartphone. With the smartphone in hand and the app running, they can control steering, brakes, throttle, and the transmission. On the smartphone screen, you get a steering wheel, gear indicator, connect and disconnect indicator, and a throttle. It sort of looks like controls for a driving game. But don't get too excited, James Bond fans. It won't be quite like the remote-controlled car chase in Tomorrow Never Dies. The remote control app is only usable when the driver is within 30 feet of the car, and the maximum speed is only 4 miles per hour, so no high-speed car chases. The prototype car is fitted with radar, cameras, ultrasonic sound, and light sensors to make remote driving possible and safe. It can also complete three-point turns autonomously. The idea is that the driver can act as his or her own spotter to help navigate difficult off-road terrain. And for the city set that never goes off-road, because really, when have you seen a Range Rover off-road, the remote control feature would allow them to get in and out of tight parking spaces. Or you could just learn how to drive. Would you like some aloe vera? You just got burned. In 2016, NASA will launch its next mission to Mars, and flying with it will be the first deep space CubeSats to hit the skies. Though the small modular spacecraft featuring off-the-shelf parts have been the talk of the industry for a while, they've mostly been relegated to missions that are a little closer to home. These twin communication relay CubeSats, being built by the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California, are actually part of a technology demonstration called Mars Cube One, or MARCO. They're each made up of a six unit CubeSat design that is about 14 and a half inches by nine and a half inches, roughly the same size as a briefcase when they're stowed. The CubeSats will be launched from Vanderburg Air Force Base in California in March of next year. They'll share the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket with NASA's lander InSight, short for Interior Exploration Using Seismic Investigations, Geodesy, and Heat Transport. Super catchy name. After launch, the CubeSats will separate from the Atlas V booster, deploy two solar panels and two radio antennas, and travel to the red planet by themselves. While InSight is landing on September 28, 2016, to begin its mission of understanding the interior structure of Mars, Marco will fly by the red planet. The challenge with InSight is the lander can transmit information in the UHF radio band to NASA's MR orbiter. The orbiter will send the information using a radio frequency in the X band, but can't receive information and transmit at the same time. As a result, it will take over an hour for the message to reach Earth that the landing has been successful. However, because Marco provides receive-only UHF and X band, which can receive and transmit, the information can be relayed immediately. For this trip, Marco is serving as an experiment to see if the technology will be useful. In other words, the CubeSats aren't necessary for the trip, but it would be nice if they could, you know, go ahead and help out. If it's successful, this could be a good go-to for future missions to Mars and other interplanetary missions. 
That's all for this week's video. Be sure to check in on Facebook and Twitter and catch past episodes on ECNMag.com. For the ECN channel, I'm Casey Panetta, and thanks for watching.